Order members, and we now move on to questions to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. Mrs Pam Cameron is not in her place, so I call Mr Trevor Clark. Uh, question number two. Thank you. I thank the member for his question. Uh, my department in sport and I have had a number of meetings with representatives from the NI Pigeon Association and Robin Swan MLA to explore options regarding funding, recognition of pigeon racing as a sport, charitable status, status rates relief, and to look at other avenues of support which may be available. The process to formally recognise an activity as a sport is the responsibility of the four sports councils and the present Sport NI and the sports councils in England, Scotland and Wales do not recognise pigeon racing as a sport and any application to recognise this activity as a sport would have to be agreed. Uh, in addition to meeting with representatives from the NI Pigeon Association, my officials met with the Charities Commission to explore the implications for pigeon clubs seeking charitable status and subsequently provided advice and guidance to the association. Clerk for supplement. Um, can I thank the Minister for that question? I mean, it, it's interesting. I, mean, I have to accept that I wasn't aware that maybe uh, until it was raised previously, and I mean, I'm glad that uh, my colleague from South, or, sorry, North Antrim has raised the issue. In terms of pigeon clubs, I didn't understand the value of this. However, Minister, in your answer, um, you haven't actually alluded to what your department is going to do actually to recognise it as a sport, which may open more avenues for them. So maybe you could outline what your department is going to do to actually help them on that journey to actually recognise pigeon clubs or pigeon racing as a sport? Well, certainly um, the association have been advised by my officials and I think they have been quite happy with the advice that they have been given thus far in terms of what the procedures are to they get recognition and what processes they need to do uh, or go through with Sport NI. And certainly as an interim, we are looking at the Charities Commission to try and give them interim support as well. They are quite happy with the support they have been given. Um, certainly, it is something that has been a, a long time in the making, and at least, at least I am trying to do something about it. Thank you. And I call Mr. Leslie. Uh, I would ask the Minister is she surprised that uh, the DUP are interested in promoting pigeon clubs uh, when they voted against the recent rates relief for the community and amateur sports clubs? A confined election coming on. I'm not, I am not for one minute uh, uh, certainly comfortable with getting in between an argument between the Ulster Unionist Party and the Democratic Unionist Party. I just prefer to watch at a distance. But certainly it is good that everyone at last is trying to recognise the work of, of Pigeon, the Pigeon Association. And indeed, the people who are involved in that have been lobbying for some time to get that recognition. Regardless of the position and rounds uh, rates relief for sports clubs, I think this is a positive step forward, uh, particularly commending his own party colleagues, Mark Robin Swans. Um, and I hope that when the recognition proceeds, that that too will enjoy full party support. Thank you. And I call Mr. Alistair. I thank the member for his question. Responsibility for the development of grassroots rugby here uh, rests in the first instance with the governing body for the sport, the Irish Rugby Football Union, uh, through its Ulster branch of Ulster Rugby. And since 20, April 2010, my department has provided over £1.6 million to rugby through a number of funding programmes to assist in the development of the sport at grassroots level in particular. The Performance Focus Programme provides funding to Ulster Rugby to improve the quality of coaches and provide participation programmes in the game of rugby in clubs and schools. Active, active Communities is a Sport NI National Lottery funded initiative that aims to increase participation in sport and physical recreation in communities across the North. And since April 2009, the funded provided to rugby through this programme has, result, has resulted in over 42,000 participants taking part in the sport, including uh, girls, young and older people, and those with disabilities. <coughs> Fundum was also provided, provided to rugby from the active awards for, for a sports programme towards costs such as equipment, coaching, education, coaching fees, and venue hire. And in addition to this, within the current financial year, my department has also added an additional uh, one, 
£114,000 funding through promoting equality, tackling poverty and social exclusion through Ulster Rugby, with key objectives being to increase rugby participation in school-aged children, to encourage more young girls uh, involved in the sport, and the creation of fitness and development programmes and development of club opportunities that cater for individuals with disabilities. Thank you, Mr. Ross, for some. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister for a, a comprehensive answer. Uh, I'm sure the Minister will agree with me that next summer, with the Women's Rugby World Cup coming to these shores, and indeed the under uh, 19s uh, Women's uh, Football Championship as well, there's a real opportunity here to get uh, increased participation amongst particularly young women and girls uh, in sport. Can I ask her what she intends to do in the, the run-up to that, and as a legacy of those events, to make sure that we get more females participating in sport, and particularly in rugby? Well, certainly the member is right. It was a comprehensive answer, um, and you, you can already see within there that there's, you know, there's quite substantial money provided to Ulster Rugby, particularly given the work that they do at grassroots level, including with young women and girls. Um, and I think it's important that that continues, and not even just because of the events that the member has mentioned, and one certainly in relation to uh, the under 19 uh, soccer for, for women, which we are giving support to. I believe the executive will be given support to they do excellent work. But in relation to Ulster Rugby, they have actually went to communities surrounding Ravenhill, now Kingspan, uh, and worked with harder age communities. And that legacy within those communities and indeed within schools right across the board, I think is exemplary. So the, the funding that we have invested in Ulster Rugby, I believe, is funding well spent. Thank you. And the comes are up. I get and thank the Minister for her answers. But can the Minister be, be sure that rugby has been developed at all levels, at grassroots level across the North? Yes, I am assured, and I know that even through Sport NI's Active Communities uh, programme it has made a significant contribution. But I believe Ulster Rugby, the credit must go to them and indeed everyone involved in it uh, through different community groups and in different uh, schools and clubs. For example, I mean, there, the, the active communities rugby coaches are in place in Antrim and Newton Abbey. They're in place in Belfast, Mid Ulster, Lisburn, Castle Ray, Newry, Morning Down, Ards and North Down, Derry City and Straban, Fermanagh and Oma. And I believe that is certainly as broad and as wide uh, reaching as you'll get. And once again, just to put on record the work that Ulster Rugby and indeed the, the Ulster Council, GAA, and indeed the IFA have done with this fund has been nothing but uh, remarkable, given some of the work that they're picking up of other bodies and other agencies. They're now bringing a certainly more comprehensive approach to rugby across the north. Thank you. And I call Mr Cahill O'Hashi. I've got to come to the question of a car. Let the whole question for it. Thank the member for his question. The total cost of the repairs required for the MAC facade and pipe work is estimated at £938,000. Uh, indeed, it's almost a million pounds. Uh, the fig this figure includes the replacement of the stone facade and pipe work, as well as costs for management and supervision of the works, which include professional and legal fees. The cost of addressing the outstanding building snag list is currently being assessed, but it is also estimated to be in the region of 160, 160 to £180,000. pounds. Remedial work was carried out to the roof of the building following recent dislodgement of the aluminium panel, and the cost to date of this work is approximately £5,000, but the full cost is being, still being assessed, and the cost to date of repairing the lintels, lantern pipework, and installation of the fall arrest system netting and the erection of scaffolding is currently at £55,000. A number of reports have been commissioned to address the defects identified in the building. To date, approximately £28,000 has been spent on the various reports. I thank the Minister for her answer. But can the Minister outline any reports of any of the inspections that uh, took place on the MAC during construction work there? Well, certainly in December 2014, I mean, there have been a, a, a various uh, amounts of reports, certainly getting into some of the problems that I outlined in the primary answer to the, mem to the member. But certainly, Ground Check Limited were commissioned to undertake an inspection of the stone cladding to the, the external uh, facade of the MAC. That inspection was uh, carried out. In April 2015, Ground Check were also commissioned to undertake the scaling operation to remove damaged or defective pieces of stone from the, the facade of the MAC. 
In July 2015, Access Rescue Consultant at Height were commissioned to carry out a survey of the external facade to check the safety of the netting and identify potentially loose material. ARC were also engaged, or are engaged on an ongoing basis to carry out regular checks to the facade of the building. In September 2015, Consarc Design Group were commissioned to review the condition of the external stonework. Again, in January of this year, during exceptional high winds, um, as the member will be aware, a, a panel was dislodged from the max roof, uh, and they took an immediate inspection to secure this. And in February uh, of this year, uh, Borough Hobart are provided a report on defective pipework, which has also been discovered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister for her answers today. I think we are all concerned that an award-winning building is now literally falling apart. Does the Minister agree that the public should not be paying twice for this work at a cost of almost a million pounds? And I do understand the contractor has gone out of business. Will she give us an assurance that all will be done to try and recover those costs and ensure that this recurrence does not happen again? Well, I certainly agree with the member. It is regrettable that almost a million pounds out of public money uh, is being spent certainly to not only carry out repairs but also to cover some of the outstanding work which is health and safety related. Um, and I can assure the member and indeed every member of this House that I will, my department through the Arts Council will pursue as much as possible a full recovery of this money because I believe it is an award winning building. Many people have gone through its door. But this has certainly raised a lot of concern, particularly given the amount of money that was spent from a public person in the first instance. Sandra over. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Minister for the response. But I wonder can the Minister provide an update on the legal situation with respect to essential repairs at the MAC, eh, which were due at the end of this month and considering today's leap day they've had an extra day? Well, certainly all the, the reports, and there are many that I outlined to Cahill Hushing, but certainly the reports on the legal situation and indeed other reports, particularly in relation to the, the, the last point that uh, Mr Gordon John raised, are still being pursued. Uh, the reports, when they're in front of me, will certainly go very, very quickly to the Cal Committee, and I will ensure that they're a copy to the member for information as well. But it is unfortunate that, you know, given the amount of money uh, that was spent on the MAC that we're now having to invest additional monies from the public purse that, that are very, very scarce to repair a building that really shouldn't have to need so many repairs given that it's quite a young building. But those reports will go to the CAL committee and certainly to the member thereafter. Kester Bracou, question number five, please. I thank the member for his question. The sub-regional stadia programme for soccer's 12-week consultation, which is memorably aware, commenced on the 30th of November 2015 and ran until the 22nd of February 2016. <coughs> During this period, consultation events were held in Craigavon, Ballymena, Belfast, Oma and Derry to seek views and feedback from stakeholders. I am content that there have been over 1,100 responses to the consultation. This demonstrates a level of interest in the sub-regional programme and a re report detailing the responses is currently being prepared and I intend to publish this as soon as possible, subject to requests for confidentiality. Careful and detailed consideration and analysis of the responses, as I mentioned, has now been undertaken and this will help to inform the final programme going forward. I just want to acknowledge and thank all those who have taken the time to respond to the consultation. Thank you, Mr. McCartney, for supplementary. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her answer and, and certainly welcome the, the consultation and the, the interest. I'm just wondering, as we take this forward, will there be some sort of regional uh, programme for particularly for GAA and rugby? And in light of the 2023 World Cup, would there be some sort of joint ventures to ensure that we can bring that to Ireland? Well, certainly, um, I mean, this executive, just to take the member's last point first, this executive has endorsed the Rugby 2023 World Cup bid, and I believe that commitment still stands. Uh, in relation to the consultation that went out into sub-regional, we already knew even before the consultation started that there would never be enough money to cover all the needs, uh, particularly going across the whole of the north. And indeed, you know, to that end, we already commenced uh, a full business case to look at a phase two 
for sub-regional for soccer and in phase one for sub-regional for GAA and for rugby. Um, I mean, that business case certainly will, I do not anticipate it being ready, and perhaps until uh, late spring, early summer. Mr. William Humphrey. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, would the Minister join with me, since we share a constituency, in congratulating Carl Frampton and his great victory on, on Saturday night <clears throat> in uniting the IBF and WBA titles in Manchester? And could I ask the Minister, in terms of the regional stadium, does the Minister envisage government money being used to upgrade the Brandywell Stadium in Londonderry? Well, certainly, um, the, the, there's no funding from my uh, department going to the upgrade of the Brandywell. Uh, any funds I put in was around the Daisy Fields and the showgrounds, and I believe that the uh, Derry City Football Club have applied to other government departments, and I wish them well in that. And I also accept the member's sentiments in terms of congratulating Carl Frampton, but also Conrad Cummings, Ram Burnett, Marco McCulloch and Luke Wilton as well, because uh, I believe that the work that those boxers have done has been exemplary, and indeed they are role models for a lot of young men and young women going forward in the, in the, the world of boxing. Thank you. And I call Mr Gerard Divert. Mr Speaker, I'm going to thank the Minister for her answer so far. Could I ask the Minister, in relation to the Substadia programme uh, generally, are the monies to fund this programme going forward likely to come from the 100 million borrowing that was agreed at Stormont House? Well, certainly the sub-regional, and I'm, I appreciate that the member um, is relatively new here, but the sub-regional soccer money was already built into an executive decision that was made in March 2011. Um, but, uh, you know, anticipation of additional needs for the three sporting bodies, that will mean a fresh bid. But the sub-regional programme, £36 million, remainder of the £62 million is coming from this mandate. Uh, and certainly it has been a programme that has attracted a lot of attention. Certainly there's a lot of need and demand out there. And one of the things that even within the members' own constituency, you can see a coming together of clubs in relation to not only promoting sport but promoting health and well-being and physical activity with local groups, local communities, and I believe that's the way forward. I call Ms. Maeve McLaughlin. I've got a Kiln Corner question number six. I thank the member for her question. Between 2007 and 2009, DECAL provided a total of £483,000 towards the construction of Culter Lanny Cahan through the North West Challenge Fund. In 2014 and 15, through the North West Social and Economic Development Programme, I allocated £150,000 towards the refurbishment of the manse building at 35 Great James Street to establish a Nagadul Kyol, a music academy, which officially opened at the beginning of this month. This project was part of my continuing commitment to the establishing a legacy uh, from the City of Culture right across the North West. And in addition to this, and Gail Aris, who managed Culture Lanny Cahan and indeed the Music Academy, has received support through the Arts Council's annual funding programme of £139,000 um, towards uh, in each of the years towards the last financial year. And Ms. McLaughlin for a supplement. Corner, and I thank the Minister for um, her answer and indeed her focus on Derry and the North West for quite a number of years. Can I ask the Minister maybe to just confirm? Um, how much DECAL has actually invested in the North West since the City of Culture ended in 2014? Well, certainly. Well, since it, I mean, the member will be aware that the City of Culture for 2013 uh, received uh, £12.8 million. And um, from the January 2014 until March 2015, certainly, I mean, between 20, January 2014 and March 2015, I've secured more than £6 million. Uh, and this includes more than £2.5 million for resource and £3.5 million for capital. And certainly even since the, the announcement of the legacy programme, an additional £2.2 million has went in, uh, bringing it up to a total of £7.92 million, which is over £20 million in a member's constituency. And Commissioner Gregory Campbell. Number seven. thank the member for his question. Responsibility for developing the sport of rowing and building on the successes of the 2012 Olympic rowers from Coleraine rest in the first instance with the governing body. My department in sport and I have worked very closely with, the rowing, uh, with rowing Ireland and the Ulster branch and local rowing clubs, including, including the Ban Rowing Club, to provide both financial and practical support. 
to further develop Rowan. In the last five financial years, up to March uh, last year, Sport and I has invested almost £1 million in Rowan, an average of £200,000 per year. This is a significant increase from the investment in the year three prior to this, from 2007 to 2010, when the total investment was £256,000. Mr. Campbell, for a supplement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, uh, would the Minister agree that the sport of rowing yielded a very considerable haul at the last Olympics in terms of uh, Alan Campbell, who's no relation of mine, and the Chambers brothers. And the developing sport now means that younger rowers are coming on exceptionally well, and that what we want to see is more gold medals on the podium for Britain at the next Olympics. Well, I'd like to say gold medals for every nation who compete, and I certainly know, I certainly know that even in the Ban Rowing Club, they have a very, very strong cross-community ethos, and that's reflected not only in their athletes, but indeed the whole community. And I would actually say that most people, regardless of which country or nation an athlete chooses to represent, they deserve all our support. But certainly Ban Rowing Club have done a great job. They do exemplary work in that uh, field of sport, and certainly not only within the sport, but also what to do outside of the, the sport in terms of building and developing good relations in that constituency. Again, comes Mr. John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, I'm sure it was an omission of error on the part of Gregory Campbell that he forgot to mention that the band rowing club has represented Ireland as well as Britain uh, in, uh, in events. Uh, can the Minister assure us that future athletes who may also wish to represent Ireland or Britain will in fact have the finance to encourage that, given that rowing is not marbles and it is an expensive sport to participate in? Well, I think the member would recognise and accept that I have been very, very consistent from coming into this department, that I support every athlete, regardless of who they decide to represent, and that should be the case for every MLA in this chamber. Uh, it's hard enough to have the commitment and discipline and make the sacrifices in order to compete without having people here making silly political points that actually doesn't reflect where people are at. I believe that certainly the work that Ban Rowan Club and the work that they have done in certainly Coleraine, but right across this island, has been respected and accepted by all rowing clubs right across. I congratulate them on their achievements. I know there will be more successes given the work that they have done and the investment they have made. And my department in sport and I, I have absolutely no doubt, will continue that relationship. I'm going to call Ms. Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, we are incredibly talented on the North Coast, um, but I believe that the level of our success has led to somewhat complacency within the executive because they think that that will carry us through. Um, so, can I ask the minister um, what support she will offer generally to, to, to rowing and other sports to ensure that we do create that important legacy when we, legacy when we have this level of success? Well, certainly, the, it's easy for the member to talk about complacency, um, but. I would actually like to think that if there's any concerns that she has, that she should, should she really bring it forward, not just in my department, but other departments. I know the Sport NI, and indeed all the athletes from the members' constituency, are very, very happy with the level of support that they've received thus far. Uh, they certainly could do with more money, but given the, the thresholds that they have, particularly getting into the Olympic and Paralympic Games, it's set at the same rate right across. Um, if they need other support, and even perhaps some sponsorship, I'd be happy to talk to sponsors, as I have done in the past. But certainly I believe that when it comes to, and one thing is very, very common, when it comes to the success of games, there are many parents in this chamber. But when these athletes are training and they're giving up of their family life and they're giving up of many things and making very many sacrifices, it's still up to us to make sure that we have their back and have their corner. And I'm prepared to do that. I know my officials will continue that, and I know Sport and I will continue that as well. Thank you. And I call Mr. Robin Swan. Thank the member for his question. And with your uh, indulgence, questions 8, 11, and 12 have all been brought together. The redevelopment of Caseham Park remains an executive programme for government commitment as an integral part of delivering the regional stadia programme. And it is a project that I am fully committed to delivering. 
Following the concerns raised in April 2015, a project assessment review power was carried out in June 2015 by the Brit British Cabinet Office and a panel of independent experts were selected by CPD. The PAR report was published on 7 August 2015 and this confirmed that the Caseham Park project is not only achievable but can be delivered. On that basis, the Department is not planning for failure and it is working with the GAA to ensure the successful delivery of this programme for government commitment. The GAA have already engaged their project team to work out on a new planning submission uh, for Caseman Park. Since the, 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 the judicial review decision, the GAA and their team have carefully considered the judgment to ensure that any new planning application fully addresses the points raised in that judgment. Initial meetings have been held with key stakeholders, including the STG, to provide the necessary assurances required to support a robust new planning application, and the GEA are currently preparing a detailed programme which will fully address the tasks associated with the successful delivery of the Caseman Park Stadium. Thank you. And I call Mr Swan for sub. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer. But can the Minister confirm that the new application for the refurbishment of the stadium will include all the new safety features, including the emergency exit procedures? Well, every, every application that anyone makes, certainly to, uh, around sports grounds, but particularly Caseham Park, the, the safety uh, at the stadiums and certainly emergency evacuation uh, procedures will be front, right, left and centre. Uh, they will be an integral part of the application, even though uh, the, the emergency evacuation wasn't part of the refusal, but certainly has been raised since. So I give the member, and indeed all members of this House, the assurance that that will be certainly done before any new plan, plan application is submitted. And I call Mr Nelson McCausland. Um, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Um, can the Minister confirm, as has been reported in social media, that the advertising hoarding erected along the front of Casement Park was erected without planning permission? And if that is the case, will she call on the GA to ensure that the illegal advertisement is removed within the 14 days specified? Well, certainly I can't confirm that it was erected without planning permission, um, and I won't be calling on the GA to remove it. If the GAA erected uh, hoarding that did require planning permission, it's up to them. Certainly, in this, the first instance to go and seek that, albeit retrospectively. I call uh, Rosie McCorley for a very quick supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I uh, thank the Minister for answers thus far. Uh, can I ask the Minister um, if uh, Mr. Dominic Walsh ever raised concerns about safety in regard to the redevelopment of Pearson Park? Uh, no, Mr Walsh never raised any concerns with me at any time about safety and in the early stages of the programme, Mr Walsh was a member of the sponsor board programme up until March 2012. Uh, the Regional Stadia Sponsor Board, which is chaired by me and the membership, includes representatives not only from the governing bodies but also Sport NI. Mr Walsh never raised it there. The sponsor board programme board meetings would have provided Sport NI and indeed Mr Walsh with an appropriate forum and opportunity to raise any concerns. He didn't do it then and he's never done it since. And uh, that ends the period for listed questions. We now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions, and I call Mr. Trevor Clark. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, can I ask the Minister, given the great victory that Carl Frumpton had on Saturday night, what plans she has actually to host a reception here within Parliament Buildings for him on his return? Well, certainly we have had, as a member will be aware, we have had receptions for certain athletes who have achieved a lot uh, in the past, and we are certainly planning to do that on the 9th of March in the Lakeland Forum in Enniskillen to look at all the successes and achievements of all athletes who have competed at different levels. And I would anticipate and I would hope that not just Carl but all the other athletes who performed on Saturday evening, they're more than welcome to that as well. Can, can I thank the Minister for that answer? And I, mean, I, mean, I want to focus primarily on Card Frumpton, given he had the, the victory on Saturday night. And, and one of his speeches he has said since, Minister, that he would love to actually have a fight in Windsor Park in terms of Belfast. So, so what will you and your department, given that there is a sellout in Manchester, given we have the champion here in North Belfast, indeed your own constituency, what are you going to do, Minister, in terms of your department to support him to bring his ambition to actually have that fight in, in Northern Ireland, in Windsor Park, and, and for those people in Northern Ireland to enjoy it here rather than have to travel elsewhere? 
Well, certainly I visited Windsor Park last week and I have to say it's very, very impressive, uh, the development and the redevelopment of Windsor Park. Um, and I think it would be a great backdrop for certainly any, uh, any boxing uh, bill. I, I'm not a boxing promoter. It's up to the boxing promoters to certainly bring forward opportunities for not just for Carl but for other boxers as well. Um, but we're in the past and we've met with uh, Barry McGuigan and Dave Carfront and many, many other boxers, professional boxers, uh, were there are opportunities, as there was in Titanic, to provide such a, a spectacle for us to enjoy, we'll certainly do all we can to help. But in the first instance, it's really a matter for the boxing promoters. Thank you. And I'll call Mr. Jared Diver. Much, Mr. Speaker. The Minister referred earlier in her earlier answers to an ongoing package of funding that her department has made available for uh, cultural legacy projects connected with the City of Culture across the North West. And obviously we're aware that the, the new sports and leisure complex in Dungiven is one of the projects that's been able to benefit from that. And we very much welcome that facility, as the people of Dungiven are certainly uh, deserving of it. Can I ask the Minister very specifically, what particular pot or strand of legacy funding was that uh, funding taken from? Well, certainly I made bids uh, to ensure that there was a, a legacy for the City of Culture and that was thankfully um, approved. And even I've made bids subsequent to that, not only just to look at uh, Coleraine, which received 1.6 million, Dungiven received 2.2 million. I believe there will be further, further funding applications for support coming in for Bala Money as part of that through uh, the, the legacy programme working in conjunction with Darien Straban, City Councils and indeed others. Certainly the Museum of Free Dairy received money uh, and many, many others. And the, I'm happy to write the member with those details. But I believe it's something that particularly given the legacy of underinvestment in the city, it's completely appropriate that each of the departments bid to try and readdress some of that imbalance. Mr. Diver for a supplement. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So, uh, with that in mind, I thank, thank the Minister for her answer. Could I ask her, in terms of eligibility for that funding, particularly in respect of arts and cultural organisations that um, actually were involved very deeply in the City of Culture year, um, was there a high level of awareness or uh, consultation with them in relation to how this funding was likely to be rolled out? Yes, there absolutely was. And in fact, um, because we have a decal office up, in the city and have continued to work with those projects, not only just you know, through 2013, but we're still there and we're still working with them. And indeed, I have visited many of the programmes. So they all came together in clusters, particularly around neighbourhood renewal areas and through those partnerships and fora and actually presented the best case forward. It was a really, really good example of other areas. That when you want to look at how an area puts its best way forward, that is it. So all those groups and individuals would have been not only aware, but would have part off and supported the bids going forward for legacy programmes. Thank you. And the comments of Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I uh, also add my congratulations uh, to double world champion Carl Frampton, his camp and his family, uh, and congratulate him on not only the skill and dedication he shows to his craft, but the dignity and respect with which he's treating others that I believe is uniting a community behind him. Um, can I ask the, the Minister for Sport, however, in relation to the sub-regional soccer uh, funding, that after years of underinvestment in East Belfast, uh, if she believes that it's vital that Glen Torn Football Club is granted the funding necessary to develop a new stadium uh, to drive sporting and community development in my constituency? Well, certainly um, the member is aware that um, the, the work not only of Glen Torn but many other clubs in his own constituency have indeed provided to health and wellbeing, primarily around young men, but I'd like to see more young women coming forward. And that needs to be shown in any bid that's going to be brought for future application. And Glen Torn have done a great job in that, and I, I believe they, they stand in good stead uh, for any future support. And I'd also like to uh, join with him in congratulating not just Carl Frampton, but indeed his entire family, who also make sacrifices for me. He's been over there for almost four months, sacrificing his family life in order to compete at the level which he did on Saturday. And that, that is something I think every member of this House could certainly support. Okay, Mr. Little for supplement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Minister for her response and, and commend her for the work that she's doing uh, to support grassroots development in soccer. Can I ask her uh, when she believes the final programme will be announced in relation to the sub-regional uh, soccer stadium funding? 
Well, certainly, um, I'm, I'm sure the member was listening very intently to the, some of the responses I gave earlier in relation to the process around the consultation. Because you know, there's over 1,100 responses, we're certainly bringing a lot of those together and doing a very, very quick but a thorough analysis on those. Uh, given the fact that some people may have wished to remain, you know, their, their submissions to re remain confidential, I'll have those removed and I'll publish that. The, next, that, the whole purpose of that is to inform an application process, and those application processes I would hope to be open literally in April sometime, if not the end of April, beginning of May, because it's really, really important that the momentum that has been built up thus far around this not only happens, but people actually see an outcome of something that's announced in 2011, but actually won't see any potential of it until 2016 and after. Thank you. And I call Mr. Marcino Mueller. Mueller, we have a kind of corollary. While I'm cash to Coronara, I'm all at Tossian, meaning the Gaelic, because the Linda Shredsha, Cartu Bam War, our Kursi Gaelic, because our current Ken the Gaelic, or we're at a brownish year, Lord Chakudna, Captain a Dolomaj. Tomorrow, a kind of corollary is the start of Irish Language Month, uh, and during the minister's tenure, she has put great emphasis on promotion of the Irish language. I wonder if it's appropriate. And what may be your last question, time to reflect on the successes of the Irish language during your period in office and perhaps some of the lessons learned? Well, certainly it is um, my last question, time, and I just want to use this opportunity to thank the principal speaker, the speaker, the principal deputy speaker, deputy speakers, speaker's office, the business office, and everybody else who's involved in it, even, not even, but as well as at the WIPs. Uh, certainly in terms of Shakta Nagilga, which is now me Nagilga, uh, the work that has been done in terms of raising awareness, not just in this island, but right across the world around uh, the event, uh, has been massive. I mean, already we're preparing uh, for, as part of Shakta Nagilga, a Tranagest, which, will, uh, which is a quiz which will happen in Culterland, uh, Macadam Ophi in Belfast which will actually take in uh, participants and competitors from New York and indeed right across, and that will be done through Skype. But certainly, even from a very young age to a very, very old age, the awareness around this has been huge and it continues to grow, and I think that's absolutely great. So in terms of what we do from tomorrow onwards, uh, it's a question of watching this space. Thank you, Martin Mueller, for supplement. Kramaira, I can call you my wife's foster. Let's hear near Louis and Tara Difa. After seeing Ganyani, she said, "Or while at Ara, trust me, look after you. A rope on chapel. Let's hear like a lighter. Then the Fred show us. Taraf the lighter on committee o'clock. We part to read. Fee his age. I got hugging her eyes from you. The minister didn't mention Difa, which is certainly a title to do. It's one of the great successes of her tenure. But I wonder, minister, if you'd like to join me in congratulating those Irish groups which have strengthened the Irish language during your tenure. Read 2016. The Biannual run comes back to Belfast this year. There's a strong rumour that you're going to take part in re 2016. Maybe you can let us know. Well, certainly, I thank the, the member for his, his, his question and indeed some of his sentiments. I took part in the last re, even though it was a very, very small part, but was happy to do so and also to take the baton uh, from Conor Nagilga and then pass it on to, I think it was Comerfic Rockton and others. And what impressed me was that, well, and I'm easily impressed when it comes to running short distances because I'm one of the short distance runners rather than a long distance runner, but certainly the amount of people from all backgrounds and none who were involved in that, and that will be the case this time. In terms of Leafa, very, very proud of the work around my department, indeed, of all the people, all 17,000 and more and growing, of people who have registered with Leafa, but also who are learning the Irish language like me. Uh, and I think it is something that hopefully will endure in the next mandate. But one thing for sure, that regardless who the next minister is, and I wish them well, that the growth of the Irish language, the interest in the Irish language, and indeed the commitment of those involved in the Irish language is going to prevail. For a hard stopping moment there, I thought he was referring to the speaker doing the run. <laughs> Comes to George Robinson. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, uh, would the Minister outline what grants are available for marching bands who wish to replace uniforms and in instruments? Well, certainly the member will be aware that we're currently looking at options around instruments for not only marching bands, for, but for all bands. Uh, the Arts Council have never funded uh, grants for uniforms, and I don't believe they will in the future because there's been a strong public interest test. There certainly is an interest uh, in the acquisition of music and the teaching of music, and a lot of the bands have done that very, very well. But certainly in relation to uniforms, that is something I don't anticipate the Arts Council taking forward. 
And I call Mr. Robinson for a supplementary. Thank, thank you, Minister, for your reply. Would the Minister agree that involvement in the marching band is a positive way for young people to learn a skill and enhance their knowledge of their culture and heritage? Well, I certainly would, and I believe that certainly a few incidents of some of the bands were particularly uh, marched and conducted themselves in a very pure way. My constituency is not reflective of where a lot of them are, uh, and I believe that the bands forum and indeed others uh, need to step up, and they need to step up, and they need to ensure that there is a code of conduct, uh, and they also need to ensure that where there are breaches of that code of conduct and the public order that they're responsible for ensuring that incidents like the, the, the outside St. Patrick's Church and my constituency are never to be repeated again. Okay. I'm going to call Mrs. Pam Cameron. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And can I thank the uh, Minister for her, um, the, qu the questions answered, for, especially to the last question. I'll just follow on from that and ask if, if she could tell us how much money has been allocated to um, the band's culture over the last five years. Well, I'm happy to, to give the, the member that uh, in writing, but there's certainly been a lot of investment, uh, not only from my department through the Arts Council, but indeed the Ulster Scots Agency has also invested in mu musical tuition. Uh, so I'll happily get the member that in writing, but I, and I also believe that many members of this House will be surprised when they see the investment that's went into marching bands in particular. Ms Cameron for supplement. I thank the Minister for her answer so far. Um, could you tell us why she then stopped that uh, funding to the band's culture? And, and I want to ask her too, does she, does she value the contribution that, they, uh, that the band's band do make um, to North Ireland? Well, certainly the, 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 the band's uh, application and indeed that fund was stopped because there's, there isn't the money. Uh, I'm currently working with uh, colleagues in the executive to try and bring forward a new scheme. Uh, I hope that that new scheme will be announced within a matter of weeks or even the funding for that new scheme and uh, the, the scheme itself will be announced in a matter of weeks because uh, I believe that not just marching bands and they do by and large play a very, very good role, particularly within small communities that they pass on traditions and they pass on musical creation and all that knowledge to, from one generation to another and that's what I'd like to see more of rather than just the ugly scenes that you see from time to time. But certainly I'm, I, I'm happy to try and persist uh, with a, a, a new fund for not just marching bands, but indeed for all bands. Okay. I'll call Mr Paul Frew, and we probably don't have time for a supplementary, Paul. Okay, I, I understand. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I ask the, the, the Minister, whilst we were all engrossed in, in watching Carl Frampton on Saturday night uh, win his, his bout on a, a second belt, uh, Ballymena's uh, very own Alan Philpott uh, became the new Lonsdale bantamweight champion in the mixed martial arts uh, sport. What suppo support can the minister give the mixed martial arts? It is a growing sport in this country. What, what can the minister do for it? I'm going to just go on my feet very quickly and say I think we need to do more. I certainly met with and follow the work of Donny Core and others, particularly in the members' constituency around mixed martial arts, which is right across the community. And I believe the work that he and his team and others do is absolutely brilliant, particularly working with children and young people who are a bit hard to reach. And now they've shown that they can compete on a world stage and get that reputation, I think we need to try and get some more investment. Time is up. Uh, that's the end of question time. And uh, congratulations, Minister, on completing your mandate. And uh, the House take its ease now while we change the top table. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wanted just to apologise to the Minister for not being present for the first question, which was mine. Thank you. Thank you.